So the day is wrapping up and I'm here with Matthew Wemben smith from One World Standards. Over 30 years experience in uh, sustainabil uh, sustainability. Matthew, what sort of changes have you seen over the past 30 years? Um, it's been really interesting. Um, I think the big difference is how mainstream sustainability has become. Um, perhaps 30 years ago it was seen as being a little bit a little bit extra, a little bit green and not, not sort of core to business. And I think now it's absolutely fundamental core to the future, the business future of, of businesses. Um, and there's, there's a good reason for that and, and, a, and a sad reason for that. The good reason is I think businesses are thinking in that way. The sad reason is a lot of those sustainability issues have simply got worse. Climate change, deforestation, water, fisheries, they're much more front of mind because they're bigger problems than they were 30 years ago. Yeah, because I was having to think about it and, and before I joined the, the steel industry, it's only, I've only been in the industry six years, uh, but before then I don't really remember hearing about sustainability. I remember as a child growing up uh, hearing about the hole in the ozone layer which sort of went away, um, but it's only the last few years I really feel like sustainability is ramped up. Is, is that the case? Um, I think it's certainly ramped up in terms of public discourse. I think the steel makers the companies have been thinking about this for, um, well, certainly a couple of decades. Um, but I remember with Responsible Steel, I've been doing a lot of work for Responsible Steel. Um, that program really started, um, well, it started about 12 years ago, really ramped up maybe six or seven years ago. And I remember the early conversation, some of the steel makers involved saying, well, the problem for us with this program is there isn't seem to be a burning platform on sustainable issues, sustainability issues for the steel sector. Um, I think there's now definitely a sense that it's a burning platform. That's it, yeah. So it's all about that uh, decarbonising, get that net zero by uh, 2050. That's right, yeah. Do you think the UK as a whole, and in particular the steel industry, are we, are we on target for that? Um, I'm not the expert on that, but the UK's Climate Change Committee produces an annual report on exactly that question, and their last report was June this year, um, June 2023. It makes pretty grim reading. Um, I think the sense in, from that report is that there's, there's good words, but those words need to be put in, into action and genuine long-term commitment, and it's urgent. And I think the sense from that report is that's not happening. So um, it's not too late, but it really needs proper action and urgently. Yeah, yeah, that word action, today's event, accelerating construction uh, transformation, Absolutely. that word act. So, so what brings you to today's event and, and uh, what, uh, what ideas do you have beforehand and have those expectations been met? Um, well, to answer your last question first, very much so. Um, for me, I, I do a lot of work um, from home, um, not just from COVID, that's the kind of work I do. Um, it's good to get out of the office um, and meet real people. And at these kinds of events, you just learn so much from talking to people on this and this with the, um, the sort of um, demand side of steel making and manufacturing, that's not my area. Um, I'm interested now in the, in the downstream chain of custody for steel products, getting them from the um, steel production to the end users. And I've just learned so much. So absolutely my expectations have been more, been more than met. It's been absolutely fantastic. Brilliant to hear. And, and from, from a steel making point of view, we are moving towards that electric arc furnace uh, technology, which is a greener way of making steel, uh, hoping to decarbonize. And then and uh, with that steel, we are making these more sustainable, uh, reusable products. So as Tata Steel, do you think we are moving in the right direction for net zero? Um, I think when I speak to people at Tata, Tata Steel, I see really committed people, um, really professional people, practical people who know what needs to be done and, and want to do it. Um, for steel making, the kind of scale of decisions that need to be taken, they are big decisions. You know, they're hundreds of million dollar decisions. And right now, as I'm sure you all know at Port Talbot, you know, those discussions are taking place. Um, it, the top level of the UK government is involved, um, obviously the very top level of Tata Steel. And I think at the moment, um, from the, the public perspective, we don't know what the answer to those discussions is going to be. Um, I really hope there's a good answer coming out um, in the next next few months. Yeah, yeah, true is true for us all. Um, and just just to wrap up then, if, if, if we are making, you know, this, this low carbon steel and we're making these sustainable products, that's all well and good. But is there a pull from uh, a customer for, further down the supply chain? Is it a pull for these types of products? Um, that's a great question. Um, a response Steel, I've been doing a lot of work with a, um, a group called um, Steel Zero um, in collaboration with the Climate Group, which is to, to bring on the on the demand side, to get the demand side to make commitments, um, future commitments, 10-year commitments, 20, 30-year commitments to buy green steel. Um, 
we've had a lot of really detailed discussions with some quite big construction sector, automotive sector companies. Before they make those kind of grand commitments, they want to know what's in the supply in the supply line, what's coming down the line. So they say, what is the supply there? So you're in this chicken and egg situation with the producers saying, well, we can make green steel if the demand's there. And on the demand side, say, well, we'll make the commitments if we know the supply is there. So how do you break out of that? I think one way we break out of that is by having those conversations. We'll jump if you'll jump, let's jump together. That's one way of doing it. And programs like Steel Zero, like Responsible Steel, are designed to catalyze those conversations and get those commitments made. The other piece actually is government. I think it's a huge role for government on the demand side, fairly directly by making government procurement specifications for, for want of a better word, green steel. And I think the Responsible Steel standard is the definition of green steel for that purpose. Um, so one is, yes, um, government procurement commitments. And then the other one is the, the policy context. And I think the government could be doing more on the policy context to make it easier for companies, producers, and on the um, demand side to make those commitments. Yeah, so again, it's that buzzword, is it collaboration? I just keep hearing about Indeed. we all need to, we are, need to collaborate. Oh, sorry, we do need to collaborate to, do, to get these things done. Uh, listen, Matthew, I know you've got a train to catch. The event's all but over. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure we catch up with you again. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. you.